Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the z-test to sample for means function in Excel, which is found under data and data analysis. You can see z-test to sample for means. In your ribbon under data, if you don't do not have the data analysis item, just go to file, options, add-ins, and down here at the bottom you can see it says manage Excel add-ins just click go and of course mine's already checked off but if you didn't have it yours would be unchecked just check it off and click OK and the data analysis item will be available to select under data so I have here a fictitious data set uh, on the left part of this worksheet and has an ID number and there's 40 IDs so 40 participants and each participant uh, would have taken a pretest and a post test. And what we want to do is determine if there's a statistically significant difference between the pretest scores and the post test scores. Now, of course, in this instance, we would often use a t test, uh, and ANOVA would actually produce the same result. But if we know the population variances, for pretest and post test, we can use what's called a z test. So, first, let's calculate the population variances for both the pretest and post test scores. So, I already have a grid built out here, and you can see I have population variance and then pretest and post test. We calculate the population variance by using equal sign and then the population variance function which is var dot p. You notice there's also an s that's for a sample variance we're looking for a population variance so we want it to be var dot p and this is fairly straightforward uh, it's going to accept the array for pretests that's all the scores under pretest. So you can see the population variance for the pretest is 70.59. For the post test, same procedure, population variance, except of course we're going to use the scores under the post test. So now we have the population variance for the post test and for the pretest. Now we don't need to calculate the mean, but I like to calculate the mean uh, for statistics like this to get an idea of if we have a post-test value that's higher or lower, a mean post-test value that's higher or lower. I like to know that going in. And that's fairly straightforward. Again, in Excel, it's average. It would be the function to calculate the mean. Mean and average, of course, mean the same thing. So I'll enter that in and then we can see that's 43.82 and then we'll calculate the mean for the post-test scores. So before running any statistics we can see that there's a difference, a mean difference of one point, exactly one point, 43.825 for the pretest and 42.825 for the post test. So before running any statistics in terms like z-test or anything like that, you can see there's not much of a difference between these means. So let's take a look at the z-test to sample for means function under data analysis analysis tools. So we click OK and you can see this is how it looks by default. So we want the, the variable one range first and that's going to be all the pretest scores. And then the next range is the variable two range. That'll be all the post test scores. So this is how you would input the data if you're not using labels. You can see I start at B2 and go to B41 and C2 to C41. If you want to include the labels, you can do that as well. You just change it to B1 and to C1, which is the same data except it also includes the labels. 
but you want to check off labels. Then you have the hypothesized mean difference. We can specify an hypothesized mean difference in this function if we want to, uh, but it comes at zero by default. It comes at zero, so we're just going to leave it as a hypothesized mean difference of zero. And now it's looking for the population variance. It says variable one variance, but it's referring to the population variance. And we already have that. Right? We know that it's uh, 70.59 for the pretest. So I'm going to enter that in. And we know that it's 49.49 for the post test. And I'm going to leave the alpha at 0 0.05, which is fairly common for counseling research and, in general, social science research. And then we can specify here an output range. So that's, that's just telling us, uh, or asking us, where we want to place the table. Right? So in this case, looking at this worksheet, uh, E11 seems like as good a place as any to place the table. So we'll click OK, and that'll actually uh, perform the analysis. So as you can see, the first thing it calculates is the mean. Uh, I already calculated that because I like to know in advance, but it calculates the mean. It, of course, ends up with the same result that uh, I have here. And it also displays the known population variances that I typed in. The number of observations here, I'll just expand this a bit. Uh, the observations, of course, are 40 uh, for the pretest and 40 for the post test. We did not specify an hypothesized mean difference, so the default was zero, as I mentioned. And then it supplies the actual z score, as well as the z critical one tail and the z critical two tail. So if we look at the Z critical two tail, we see it's 1.95 and Z is, the Z statistic is uh, 0 0.577. So it's less than the critical value. So we know we failed to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, another way to know that of course is to look at the probability for two tail, which is 0.56 or 56%, uh, which is well above the 5% level it would have to be below 5% for us to reject the null hypothesis. So if in this instance, we fail to reject, which means we are going to assume uh, there is no difference between the two groups. That is, they are not statistically significantly different. Uh, if this value were less than 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis and say there is a statistically significant difference between the pretest and post-test scores. I want to offer you an important reminder about using uh, the functions in the data analysis dialog. And for all these uh, different tools, including the z-test to sample for means, uh, once they're run, uh, they do not update dynamically. So if I were to alter, like say that I realized there was an error in a recording of one of the scores, and I want to change the score, let's say the, for participant 1005, the post-test was recorded 48, it was actually 38, and I change that, you can see it updates the uh, function, the built-in function, the average function, but it does not update the output generated from the analysis tools. So to update this output with this new value, you would need to go back in, and it's not too difficult, and just rerun the analysis. You, for this particular test, you would have to update the uh, population variance. That would just be a small change, 49.34. Uh, but other than that, it all stays the same. And for some of the uh, analysis tools, uh, there's nothing that has to be changed at all, depending on what you update. And you just click OK, and it'll say, it'll be a warning here that, that you're going to overwrite what you have. That's fine. And you can see in this case, it didn't really change the output tremendously. 
uh, the values changed a bit, but the conclusions uh, would still be the same. Uh, it'd be a, a fail to reject the null hypothesis would be the finding here. I hope you found this video on using the Z-Test to sample for means feature in Microsoft Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.